A space telescope designed to search for the hardest to find asteroids and comets that stray into Earth's orbital neighborhood, NASA's Near Earth Object Surveyor recently passed a rigorous technical and programmatic review. Now the mission is transitioning into the final design and fabrication phase and establishing its technical, cost, and schedule baseline. The mission supports the objectives of NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office at NASA headquarters in Washington. The NASA Authorization Act of 2005 directed NASA to discover and characterize at least 90% of the near-Earth objects more than 140 meters across that come within 30 million miles of our planet's orbit. Objects of this size are capable of causing significant regional damage, or worse, should they impact the Earth. Managed by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, NEO Surveyor will journey a million miles to a region of gravitational stability, called the L1 Lagrange point, between Earth and the Sun, where the spacecraft will orbit during its five-year primary mission. From this location, the NEO Surveyor will view the solar system in infrared wavelengths, light that is invisible to the human eye. Because those wavelengths are mostly blocked by Earth's atmosphere, larger ground-based observatories may miss near-Earth objects that this space telescope will be able to spot by using its modest light-collecting aperture of nearly 20 inches. NEO Surveyor's cutting-edge detectors are designed to observe two heat-sensitive infrared bands that were chosen specifically so the spacecraft can track the most challenging to find near-Earth objects, such as dark asteroids and comets that don't reflect much visible light. In the infrared wavelengths to which NEO Surveyor is sensitive, these objects glow because they are heated by sunlight. In addition, NEO Surveyor will be able to find asteroids that approach Earth from the direction of the Sun, as well as those that lead and trail our planet's orbit, where they are typically obscured by the glare of sunlight, objects known as Earth Trojans. The mission will also help to characterize the composition, shape, rotation, and orbit of near-Earth objects. While the mission's primary focus is on planetary defense, this information can be used to better understand the origins and evolution of asteroids and comets, which formed the ancient building blocks of our solar system. When it launches, NEO Surveyor will build upon the successes of its predecessor, the Near-Earth Object Whitefield Infrared Survey Explorer. Repurposed from the WISE Space Telescope after that mission ended in 2011, Near-Earth Object Whitefield Infrared Survey Explorer proved highly effective at detecting and characterizing near-Earth objects, but NEO Surveyor is the first space mission built specifically to find large numbers of these hazardous asteroids and comets. After the mission passed this milestone on November 29, key instrument development got underway. For instance, the large radiators that will allow the system to be passively cooled are being fabricated. To detect the faint infrared glow of asteroids and comets, the instrument's infrared detectors need to be much cooler than the spacecraft's electronics. The radiators will perform that important task, eliminating the need for complex active cooling systems. Additionally, construction of the composite struts that will separate the telescope's instrumentation from the spacecraft has begun. Designed to be poor heat conductors, the struts will isolate the cold instrument from the warm spacecraft and sunshield, the latter of which will block sunlight that might otherwise obscure the telescope's view of near-Earth objects and heat up the instrument. Progress has also been made developing the instrument's infrared detectors, beam splitters, filters, electronics, and enclosure. And work has begun on the space telescope's mirror, which will be formed from a solid block of aluminum and shaped by a custom-built diamond turning machine. The non-exclusive SpaceX study regarding the possibilities of reboosting the Hubble Space Telescope is ongoing. On Thursday, December 22, 2022, NASA issued a request for information to seek additional information about commercial capabilities available to reboost a satellite in orbit, using Hubble as a demonstration, at no cost to the government. There are no plans at this time for NASA to conduct or fund a dedicated Hubble servicing mission. The request for information will remain open until Tuesday, January 24, 2023, as NASA continues exploring options for Hubble's future. NASA and SpaceX signed an unfunded Space Act agreement Thursday, September 22, to study the feasibility of a SpaceX and Polaris program idea to boost the agency's Hubble Space Telescope into a higher orbit with the Dragon spacecraft, at no cost to the government. There are no plans for NASA to conduct or fund a servicing mission or compete this opportunity, the study is designed to help the agency understand the commercial possibilities. SpaceX, in partnership with the Polaris program, proposed this study to better understand the technical challenges associated with servicing missions. 
This study is non-exclusive, and other companies may propose similar studies with different rockets or spacecraft as their model. Teams expect the study to take up to six months, collecting technical data from both Hubble and the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. This data will help determine whether it would be possible to safely rendezvous, dock, and move the telescope into a more stable orbit. While Hubble and Dragon will serve as test models for this study, portions of the mission concept may be applicable to other spacecraft, particularly those in near-Earth orbit like Hubble. Hubble has been operating since 1990, about 335 miles above Earth in an orbit that is slowly decaying over time. Reboosting Hubble into a higher, more stable orbit could add multiple years of operations to its life. At the end of its lifetime, NASA plans to safely deorbit or dispose of Hubble. NASA's Juno spacecraft completed its 47th closed pass of Jupiter on December 14. Afterward, as the solar-powered orbiter was sending its science data to mission controllers from its onboard computer, the downlink was disrupted. The issue and inability to directly access the spacecraft memory storing the science data collected during the flyby was most likely caused by a radiation spike as Juno flew through a radiation-intensive portion of Jupiter's magnetosphere. Mission controllers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and its mission partners successfully rebooted the computer and, on December 17, put the spacecraft into safe mode, a precautionary status in which only essential systems operate. As of December 22, steps to recover the flyby data yielded positive results, and the team is now downlinking the science data. There is no indication that the science data through the time of closest approach to Jupiter, or from the spacecraft's flyby of Jupiter's moon Io, was adversely affected. The remainder of the science data collected during the flyby is expected to be sent down to Earth over the next week, and the health of the data will be verified at that time. The spacecraft is expected to exit safe mode in about a week's time. Juno's next flyby of Jupiter will be on January 22, 2023. NASA's Perseverance rover deposits first sample on Mars' surface. A titanium tube containing a rock sample is resting on the red planet's surface after being placed there on December 21 by NASA's Perseverance Mars rover. Over the next two months, the rover will deposit a total of 10 tubes at the location, called Three Forks, building humanity's first sample depot on another planet. The depot marks a historic early step in the Mars sample return campaign. Perseverance has been taking duplicate samples from rock targets the mission selects. The rover currently has the other 17 samples taken so far in its belly. Based on the architecture of the Mars sample return campaign, the rover would deliver samples to a future robotic lander. The lander would, in turn, use a robotic arm to place the samples in a containment capsule aboard a small rocket that would blast off to Mars orbit, where another spacecraft would capture the sample container and return it safely to Earth. The depot will serve as a backup if Perseverance can't deliver its samples. In that case, a pair of sample recovery helicopters would be called upon to finish the job. The first sample to drop was a chalk size core of igneous rock informally named Malay, which was collected on January 31, 2022, in a region of Mars' Jezero crater called South Sida. Perseverance's complex sampling and caching system took almost an hour to retrieve the metal tube from inside the rover's belly, view it one last time with its internal cache cam, and drop the sample roughly three feet onto a carefully selected patch of Martian surface. But the job wasn't done for engineers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, which built Perseverance and leads the mission. Once they confirmed the tube had dropped, the team positioned the Watson camera located at the end of Perseverance's seven-foot-long robotic arm to peer beneath the rover, checking to be sure that the tube hadn't rolled into the path of the rover's wheels.